In a world where the sky can rain down threats as easily as raindrops, Israel's Iron Dome stands the test of time to protect civilization and societies from threats that literally come out of nowhere. Today we're going to talk about the Iron Dome in Israel. We're going to reveal its history, its capabilities, and what we might see from it moving forward. The Iron Dome, operational since 2011, has transformed into Israel's aerial guardian. Its capabilities far surpass those of a mere air defense system. Picture a sophisticated network of radars, weapons, like missiles, operating together, potentially lasers, to shoot down any oncoming threat. This is a super advanced system. The attacks on Israel on October 7th, 2023, while completely devastating and tragic, could have been a lot worse if Israel's Iron Dome hadn't intercepted thousands of rockets that came in roughly around the same time. This just shows that the algorithms, the weapons that are involved in the Iron Dome, really stand up to threats that are thrown at it. And we're gonna dive into that even more. So the journey of the Iron Dome actually becoming something, becoming real, is really a journey of international cooperation more than anything. It's obviously Israel's, but it took a lot of nations in order to make it happen. But at the end of the day, it's just proven that countries can work together to create something so sophisticated. In the early 2000s, the state of Israel found itself dealing with an increasingly dangerous crisis. The skies over its cities were increasingly marred by incoming rockets Rockets, primarily from Hezbollah, the Lebanon-based militant group. These hostilities weren't new. Tensions had been simmering since Israel's establishment. However, it was the second Lebanon war in 2006 that really served as the wake-up call to needing to create the Iron Dome. Hezbollah's barrage of thousands of rockets into Israel's heartland underscored a gaping hole in Israel's national defense. The Israeli government, in collaboration with Rafael Advanced Defense Systems, embarked on a mission to engineer a shield that could guard the skies. This project wasn't just about military might. It was about safeguarding citizens and preserving normalcy amidst chaos so people could actually try to live a normal life. But the development, as you can imagine with anything complex, wasn't straightforward and Israel ran into a lot of challenges. So in 2011, the United States saw the value in helping Israel and supplied billions of dollars to help fund the Iron Dome. So as for the name, the Iron Dome, here's a little interesting tidbit. It was at first called the Golden Dome, but then finally Israel decided that based on the strength that it would project, the strength that it would give to its people to be able to live a normal life, iron, since iron symbolizes strength, would be a much more fitting name. Thus, the name Iron Dome was born in 2011. Let's talk about how the Iron Dome works. This is pretty amazing how the algorithms, the weapons, the lasers, the detection, the radars, how it all works together. So let's talk initial detection and response. When a hostile rocket launches towards Israeli airspace, the Iron Dome's radar system immediately detects its presence. Using advanced algorithms, the radar calculates the rocket's trajectory, assessing whether it poses a threat to populated areas or critical infrastructure. Then comes trajectory analysis. The system determines the probable impact point, evaluating within a radius of mere meters. This precision is crucial in deciding whether to engage an interceptor missile. Rockets heading towards unpopulated areas may be allowed to continue conserving resources for higher threat interceptions. Once a threat is confirmed, the nearest Iron Dome battery consisting of three or four launchers springs into action. Each launcher capable of housing upwards of 20 missiles chooses the missile that is right for the distance and the interception and makes a custom-based algorithm and fires the correct missile at the right time at the right speed in order to intercept the incoming threat. The interceptor missile traveling at blistering speeds of Mach 2.5, which is approximately 1900 miles per hour, those types of speeds just make me happy if you didn't know so already. I feel tingles and I hope you do too. One of the cool things too is that those interceptor missiles are equipped with electro-optic sensors, which means as light changes and shifts, they don't get fooled by light changes in the background of that incoming threat. And that helps the Iron Dome's interceptor missiles operate in adverse weather, clouds, during different times of day. There's basically no time where the Iron Dome can't do its job. Currently, there's 10 Iron Dome facilities placed throughout Israel with the plan to make it 15 here in the near future. And one of the things that's pretty awesome about the dome is like a high piece of tech hardware, it can be updated as well. Its algorithms can be updated. It can be equipped with different suites of avionics, which can basically upgrade it to counter new and upcoming threats. So it's almost like Israel has an omnipresent goalkeeper up in the sky, which keeps any rockets from falling into strategic places that could harm infrastructure or people. It's really a technological marvel.
Oh, and the missiles can go Mach 2.5, which is just awesome. All right, so now we know how it works, but how effective has it actually been? Well, you'll be surprised to know that there's been essentially a 90% success rate of the Iron Dome since inception. And again, like we talked about, it can be continuously improved and any system that can be continuously improved is gonna learn. And now with the adaptation of AI, I'm assuming this thing's gonna become even more effective. And that 90% success rate is highlighted by the fact that on October 7th, 2023, when the attacks were launched on Israel, it said that upwards of 8,000 rockets were intercepted by the dome on that day alone, which is just staggering. But the Iron Dome isn't infallible, right? Just like with any system, I mean, fighter jet engines, sometimes you have to shut them down in flight. So anything that's mechanical at the end of the day is gonna have the opportunity to to fail. So that's why you need backups. And at the end of the day, the Iron Dome hasn't been perfect. You know, sometimes rockets have gotten through that have hurt and killed people, damaged infrastructure. But at the end of the day, I think this thing really gives a lot of support to the Israeli people knowing that they're protected by that goalkeeper with Mach 2.5 missiles. So its success rate of 90%, while amazing, it's not 100% yet. And then you can imagine the global defense market, like the Tony Starks out there in the Iron Man suits, you know, they see the Iron Dome, they're like, uh, yeah, we'll sell you an Iron Man suit with the Iron Dome, right? These defense contractors see the success of the Iron Dome and they're gonna market it. So there's lots of different nations out there that want their own version of the Iron Dome. On a personal note, serving in Afghanistan, we had our own version of the Iron Dome that would protect us while we slept. Now, I still heard lots of mortars hit around me, but I think the key is they were hitting around me. They were allowed to pass through potentially and hit parts of the base that didn't have any critical infrastructure or people. So knowing that that Iron Dome was there and seeing it operate sometimes was something that just gave me a lot of peace. And this system is now up for sale. So different nations have expressed interest in it and you can bet a lot more Iron Domes are probably gonna be seen around the globe. So hopefully we get to a day at some point where there's no need to protect from mortars, but currently in Israel, that's nowhere in sight. Obviously, we're in a situation where they really need this Iron Dome more than ever. So we're most likely going to see this Iron Dome increase in capabilities, increase in size up to that 15 that we saw, and the potential for other nations to instill their own version of the Iron Dome. But I think it's pretty cool because this Iron Dome is kind of a beacon of pride for Israel. And I think it shows that from adversity, innovation can arise as well. And that has certainly happened in this case. So ideally we get to a point one day where everybody's got one of these domes and nobody has to launch these weapons at each other. But until that day happens, you can bet the Iron Dome will continually be improved. I'll follow updates to it here and provide a video for that in the future. Thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate you checking out this video on the Iron Dome. If you enjoyed it, check out another one of these videos that'll pop up over here because why not? It would just be fun. Good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time of day it is for you. Thank you for watching these videos. I wanna throw in all the other greetings as well. Maybe it's midday, good midday, good evening, all the above. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in one of these videos. Most of all, have a great day.